Hello, everyone. Welcome to another session of Cyper Conversations. I'm Kanti. I'm the director for the Cyper Institute. Today, I have with me Michaela Fluth, who's a new Cyper leader. She's going to be a freshman at Dakota State starting this fall. And I have a very special guest with us, uh, Ola Bumi Baba Lola. I'm trying guessing that was okay, the pronunciation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, she's a leading information and cybersecurity expert. She has over 15 years of multifaceted work experience across many industries. She has extensive knowledge in information and cybersecurity strategy and governance, risk management, policy development, implementation, IT governance and control, IT audit, and third-party security risks. She has worked with several organizations providing IT and security leadership. She her experience as the pioneer chief information security officer in four locations of an international bank positions her as a leading expert in deploying and managing several information security programs, enterprise-wide IT and cert security certifications, and maintenance and various capacity building efforts. She currently works with the Scotia Bank as senior manager, cybersecurity and IT risk, before joining uh, Scotia Bank, she worked with MNP uh, Standard Charter Bank and the Central Bank of Nigeria, amongst many others. Um, Ola, thank you so much for being here today with us. The floor is now yours. Thank you, Kansi. Um, thank you, Michaela. And good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here and thank you for having me here. Um, so I guess um, the right way to start would be to introduce um, and talk a little bit about my background and uh, my journey to here, right? Um, so I would start from the beginning. Um, when I was in high school, I wanted to be many things at different stages. Um, at first, I wanted to be a lawyer because I heard um, someone speak on TV so eloquently and I said, oh, this is what I have to be. To become and um, after a few years i saw another person um, who was a medical doctor um, on another program and i said oh this is a career um, worth um, doing so i focused again on becoming a medical doctor um, that was what i wanted to be to be until i just a little few months um, to live in high school and then I met a pharmacist and I said, oh, it's the same medical field. So why not become a pharmacist? I don't have to do nights and, you know, and all of that. So I then wanted to become a pharmacist. Um, but then just as I was preparing to start um, writing um, um, the exams to get into the university, I began to hear about the course computer science. It, you know, it started coming up and somebody came around and said, oh, this is the course of the future. You know, this is what is going to take over the world. And that piqued my interest. I'm like, okay, now I think I'm, I want to listen. I want to know more. Um, at that time, Google wasn't that much of a big thing. It's doing research, you know, you have to look for test books, you know, journals and all of that. I did a little bit of that, um, coupled with the fact that computers at that time wasn't as prevalent as um, they've become now. So I said, let me give computer science you know, um, a chance. And that was what I did. I went to, into the university to, to study um, computer science and I, I graduated after five years as a computer scientist. Um, so that's that's about me, uh, how I <laughs> found myself um, in this field. And now um, talking about myself generally, so I have a BS in computer science. I have a master's degree in cybersecurity, information security from the University of Salford, United Kingdom. I've, I'm from what you read, I have extensive um, experience across different um, industries. I've been opportunity to work in the telecoms, in banking, as a regulator, 
and um, as a consultant. And so that positions me, you know, um, in a place where I'm able to see and experience and talk about cybersecurity from many perspectives. And um, so in terms of my career, I started as an IT support person. Um, when I left university, I joined a company that was providing internet services. And my role at that time was to support customers, you know, when they have issues with their internet, you know, services and all of that. And at that time, that was like the most common entry level job for us. And that was what I did until I then joined another firm that was providing consulting services in the area of computer science. And I did um, spend some few years with them. And I thought about, you know, progressing and furthering my studies and wanted to go for my master's. And I began to think of um, which area I wanted to do that, you know, in. And I, in, in my research, again, um, information security started coming up, you know. Um, I started saying it and people were saying, oh, this is, you know, another you know, thing that is um, going to take over the future. And that interested me again. I love to explore and I, I love new things, right? And so I decided to do my master's in information security, which um, I did. And I came back home to Nigeria. I'm, I'm from Nigeria, by the way, and in Africa. So I started to work in a bank as an IT auditor, information um, assurance. And part of, of what I did was to also um, ensure that um, in terms of their information security, they were in compliance you know, with um, the bank's policies and you know, um, regulatory um, stipulations um, that I did for some years. I think I moved um, across three or four banks and an opportunity uh, came for me to really um, work as an information um, security professional, um, which was in a telecoms organization. So I took on the role of an information security specialist. And that was my um, first opportunity to actually uh, practice um, information security operations um, as, as it was known at that time. And that was quite interesting because then we were formulating policies, you know, managing vendors, ensuring that um, the people that were in charge of firewalls and uh, all those technologies, I, I don't want to use too many techie terms, um, all those technologies were doing um, what they the, the ensuring that the organization um, at that time was was being protected and after that i moved on to um the central bank which was the apes um, bank for the country as a subject matter expert in cyber security and my um, core responsibility was ensuring that the banks that we were um, supervising, that the deposit money banks and other financial institutions um, were aligning to the central bank's um, regulations, the central bank's stipulations and best practices in, in cybersecurity. And from there, I went on to become the chief information security officer for an international bank um, in, in Nigeria. Um, this bank, um, Standard Chartered Bank, has um, presence in, I think, close to 60 countries. And I was responsible for Nigeria and um, for other countries um, at that uh, time. And that really um, gave me the experience, um, the, the leadership experience, and uh, because I had to you know, ensure um, from um, the, the CISO C level that um, everything in terms of our policies, in terms of the controls that we have in place, in terms of our strategy, you know, the day-to-day -day running of um, cybersecurity was my responsibility. And I did that for a few years until I decided to then um, um, relocate to, to Canada. Um, where I am presently, and um, here in Canada, um, the, the still the same career for me. I first worked with MNP, 
as um, an IT assurance person and, and, and we did cybersecurity assurance as well. And that led me to Scotia Bank um, where I do IT and cybersecurity risk. Um, so that um, sort of, you know, um, explain uh, some of my, my career. Um, even though the way that, you know, I've, I've explained it, it seems like, oh, I'm moving from one you know, step to another. But we all know that life is not like that, uh, right? So um, there were challenges along the, the way. And so that's just to tell our audience that you, you don't give up, right? Um, once you have your eyes set on what you want to become, and what you want to be, you must um, stay on that road. Whatever challenges that come, you have to make up your mind um, to, to surmount it and to overcome it and move on to your next um, um, your, your next role or, or the best place that you want to be. So in, in terms of some of the things that I did um, and that has helped in, in bringing me to, to where I am uh, today, I think the first thing is my interest, right? I I love what I do. Um, from the beginning that I chose computer science, I have never stopped loving it. I enjoy it. I can stay on a computer 24 hours in a day. And so I never get tired, right? Um, and so interest for me is key, right? And um, in addition to that is the education, you know, that I have, I've explained. I've ensured that I've given myself the right foundation in terms of my first degree, my second degree. Now, that doesn't mean that if you do not have a degree in computer science, you cannot succeed or you cannot thrive in cybersecurity. No, that is not it at all. Um, you can actually be anything that you set your mind to be. It doesn't matter whether your first degree is in English. Um, once you've made up your mind that, you know, this is a career that I want to pursue, and you begin to do the right thing, you know, at that point in time, then you, the sky um, is the limit. Now, another thing that I did was to um, get and gain some certifications in, in the field. Um, I know, you know, a lot of times people ask the question, um, do you really need certifications, you know, to grow, to thrive in, in, in cybersecurity? Um, the answer is no, but I, always strongly, strongly advise people to, to do that because what certification does for you is to validate your knowledge, is to say that all oh, the things that you claim you know, to know or the things that you claim that you can do, um, you actually certified to it. It also sort of separates you from the others. You know, when you're you know, applying for a role and they're trying to sift, um, being certified helps you to to, to pass that check mark. So um, I did some um, certifications and continuous learning as well. Um, computer science, information security, cybersecurity, it has evolved over the years and it's continuing to evolve, evolve, right? And so you must continue to learn, you must continue to adapt, you must unlearn some things and relearn others, right? So that's it, it, it's a mindset, it's something that you have to. Um, make up your mind. You do not get tired of learning. You do not get tired of, you know, taking exams. You do not get tired of attending webinars, you know, listening to other professionals and picking up new things. So you must, you know, and that's what I, I have done over the years. And finally, um, I think what's worked for me is networking and collaboration. It's, it's very key, right? Because um, a lot of the roles that I've gotten have been as a result of networking and, and collaboration. Opportunities that have opened up um, have been um, from others, from friends, you know, from associates, from, from colleagues and the rest of it. So these are some of the things that I have done that has, you know, helped me um, get to, to where I, I am today. Well, Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing all that, uh, you know, your journey, your experiences. We're so grateful that you're here and that, you know, many more people can see what it takes, you know, that it doesn't have to be uh, 
so many things that you do to get into the cyber field. There are so many avenues you can take into cybersecurity, and that's what we want to showcase. So again, thank you so much for being here. Um, please go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's it's my pleasure, and, and I'm actually happy to, to be here. Um, one of the things that I, I, I've always tried to do is to help others, is to encourage others, you know, uh, in, on this journey. A lot of people, you know, come to me um, looking for mentoring, you know, um, seeking answers to their questions, you know, on LinkedIn, uh, people who know me, you know, friends who refer people all the time. And a lot of them are people who are out of universities already. So they didn't study computer science or um, information technology, some of them economics, you know, some of them um, accounting, some of them arts, you know, geography, different courses. And the one thing that I always tell them, it's it's about your attitude and your mindset. Once you have the right attitude and once your head is in the right place, you will thrive and um, have a, a very good career in cybersecurity. Because the beauty of cybersecurity is that there's so many domains there's so many things that you can become in cybersecurity. I've had the opportunity to do um, cybersecurity operations. You know, I currently do cybersecurity, you know, governance, compliance, and risk. And so you you can, if, if you start with one and you don't like it, you can pivot into another one, you know, another opportunity that comes your way. You can grow, you can learn, you know, you can grow vertically, you can grow um, laterally. So it's, there's so many opportunities. And I tell people all the time, you don't have to give up. I encourage people. I have a platform where I bring people of, you know, who want to get started in um, cybersecurity together. And all the time I hear them share, you know, the experience, you know, taking new courses, taking advantage of the online courses out there, the free certifications and all of that. So um, to our audience, uh, just like to tell them, you, you, you do not have to confine yourself, you know, um, into to any um, mold, right? Just once you have the, the interest, you have the mind, the right mindset and the right attitude, you will have a successful and a thriving cybersecurity career. That is so true. You know, most of the time when we face any kind of difficulty, not just in, you know, career, but in life, we tend to kind of take a step back. We're like, oh, it's too difficult. Oh, we're facing too many difficulties. Or, though this is so hard. I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I can do this. I think it adds in, you know, that self-doubt when things are going too bad, you kind of have that moment there. So that is such wonderful advice. Um, sorry, again, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I keep um, yes, and, and I think another very important thing that um, they need to know is that um, there will be challenges, right? Um, we talk about these things. I've said you can be who you want to be. You can, you know, have a thriving cybersecurity career, um, but it's also going to mean that you don't run away at the first set of challenges, you know, that that come your way. Being women in this field, um, so there is um, this report that I read um, from a company called No Before, and as um, as of now, you have just about 25% women representation in cybersecurity, but in 2013, it was 10%, you know, so um, in 10 years, we've made 15% progress, um, which is good progress. And so um, when we were starting out, there were very few women. In fact, in the first years of my, of my career, I most often am the only woman on the team, you know, in the midst of men. And I recollect when I started out as, um, you know, um, help desk as an IT support person. At that time, laptops were rare. And what we had, well, desktops, you know, 
big computer monitors and we had to carry, you know, and, you know, at that time they were like, can you carry these things? You know, I don't, I want a man who can, you know, do these things, who has the strength to move, you know, and you would have to go out of your way to convince them that, look, I can do it as well. Um, and I remember we also used to do cloning. So what cloning meant was we used to put computer parts together. Um, so you would go and get all the parts and you would fix it together and it would, you know, um, become a CPU or form, form your CPU. And this was something that they didn't really want a young woman to, they wanted somebody who, who could, you know, churn out, you know, clone systems, you know, and you have to be able to convince them that um, I can do it, you know, the bias, you know, um, at that point in time, but well, we're in a better place now. It's it's we're still not there, but we've made good progress. And I can imagine the next 10 years with what you know um you're doing, your organization, Cyber is doing, and the different organizations out there. Um, I'm sure we would hit the 40, 45, 50 percent mark in the next 10 years. That is the hope. Uh, we have a few questions that we prepared, you know, based on your journey, based on what we think our audience would like to know. You know, the first one I wanted to ask is, you've mentioned your journey, right? You did computer science, and then, you know, you found out that you were interested in, in information security. So were there any challenges that you faced in your career? You know, uh, any one point in time where you thought, okay, this is the most difficult thing I've ever had to do? And if so, you know, how did you overcome that? How did you navigate through that challenge? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, the, the most difficult um, challenge um, was juggling my career with uh, motherhood. I I remember when I was preparing to write um, one of our certifications, um, CISSP, um, to, to be precise, I'd gone for the training and I was reading and preparing um, for the exams. And I just found out um, all of a sudden that I was pregnant and was going to have a, a, a baby. And it was, it just put a stop to it because I became, you know, sick and all of that. So um, that's a challenge that came, you know, with being a woman um, in, in that field. And also um, when I was CISO, um, it was during the pandemic and there were um, a lot of challenges, a lot of cyber, escalated cyber risk at that point in time. And you had to be on your toes, on your feet 24 seven, and um, anything could happen at any point in time. And I had two young children um, who were in nursery, nursery and, and primary school. We were also doing homeschooling. Um, so it was quite, quite challenging for me, you know, um, being a mother, uh, being a wife, and also being a CISO, you know, and managing um, to um, about four countries at that point in time. So that's, that's been um, the most um, challenging phase of my career. Uh, but, but what I did was to um, find um, a, a balance, a work-life balance, and to support myself with people who could help me um, delegate some duties um, on the home front, for example, and also um, at work as well, um, delegate tasks to others and find ways that people could, you know, help reduce my workload and, you know, make my life easier. And I also had bosses that were um, quite understanding. And uh, fortunately I was working in an organization at that time that um, understood that you, everyone needs that work-life balance. Um, so that was the toughest challenge for me, but um, with the help of others, um, with a support system that I surrounded myself with and uh, with delegation, I was able to manage. Yeah, a great support system, you know, someone who can help you through 
challenges you. If you're telling someone, hey, I'm experiencing this difficulty, instead of just saying, oh, you can figure it out or you know something like that, if they're able to help you or guide you through even just a little bit makes a ton of a difference. Yes, yes, it, it does. And it, it's, you, you cannot um, overemphasize um, the need to, to support yourself um, with peers or with mentors um, to help you on your, on your journey. Uh, there's an adage um, in my country um, that, well, it's also in English as well, um, two ads are, are better than one, right? And we only see things from one point of view, um, but with another person's help, you then you know can begin to see it from um, other people's points uh, as well. So I think it is very, very important, even um, at every phase and at every stage of your career, always um, be look for help and seek for help. Um, don't try to do it on your own and don't have the mindset, especially when you're just starting that, oh, they're going to think I'm stupid or they're going to think uh, I don't know what I'm doing. No, nobody's going to think that. Um, we've all been there at um, one point or the other. So when you need help, reach out to others. Um, you you have uh, you can reach out to your peers. You can reach out to mentors. Reach out to colleagues, you know, and the, you would just realize that things will become easier um, for you. Sometimes, you know, it's just by people, you know, pointing you to the right direction, um, where to get an information um, from, for example, or, you know, pointing you to the right person uh, and things like that. So just reach out. That's, that's what I advise people all the time. Don't keep it to yourself. Find help. I think the biggest challenge we have with asking for help is it we feel it makes us look weak. And right? a lot of people, they don't ask those questions. They don't ask for help because there's the stigma around asking for help in any kind of situation where, oh, hey, can you help me do this? Okay. So, and the other person might not even think of it, but we think, oh, they're going to think I don't know. They're going to think I'm not capable. They, they're going to think I'm weak. The thing that's a lot of, so not just a lot, but it's a lot as a society to overcome that, you know, that feeling. Yeah, and, and I think the, the way to look at it is this, nobody knows it all. And um, for cybersecurity, there are so many domains and no one um, is a master of a whole when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, you can only... Um, be an expert in a few, you know, of the domains and then know um, some um, little about the, the other domains. And so just do not keep it to yourself. Like you, you said, nobody's going to think that you're stupid. I know um, that culture as well um, has some things to do with it. Um, there's some culture where uh, people have been, you know, taught um, to, to keep things to yourself, you know, don't watch wash your dirty linens in public, you know, <laughs> they, they say, so you don't want to appear um, stupid or like um, you, you don't, you, you're, you don't know what you're doing, but that's, the, the world is changing. And so reach out to others, um, seek for help when you need it, you will become better. And the ones you're reaching out to also are enriched um, by helping you. So in your current role, what does your day look like just at work? You know, do you work uh, uh, through the day? Do you have a lot of meetings? Do you get to travel a lot? What does your day look like at work? Um, so I currently do um, cybersecurity and IT risk, um, governance, compliance, uh, and risk management. And what I do now is to, to manage risk um, for my organization. Um, like I said, in, in cybersecurity, there are many domains and your, your day responsibility or what you do on a day-to-day -day would um, 
be dependent on the role that you fill. If you do vulnerability assessment, um, for example, which means you're looking for vulnerabilities and you're helping your organization manage those vulnerabilities, then you could do a lot of um, assessments, you do a lot of reviews and all of that. But for me, it is uh, more of risk management. So I want to ensure that uh, my organization is managing risk, cybersecurity risk um, effectively. I want to ensure that we are in compliance with all um, statutory obligations, um, when we're in compliance with all um, regulations, um, cybersecurity and IT regulations. And so I would say that um, what I want to emphasize is that it, it doesn't matter um, what domain that you play in, uh, collaboration and um, reaching out and working with others, it's something that is common. Um, to everyone. So I do a lot of that. I collaborate with other teams, um, just trying to find out um, what they do and um, wanting to know if they do it in a way that aligns with, you know, the organization, organization's policies and aligns with the, the way the organization, organization's processes. So we do a lot of collaborations across teams, across the businesses, across other risk um, management teams as well. Um, so that's that's basically what I do: um, cybersecurity risk management, IT risk management. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. And you know, we talked about the statistics of the number of you know females in the cybersecurity field currently. Do you see that there are many efforts, or do you see that? the efforts that are being put forth, you know, to bring in more inclusion, to be more uh, diverse in the field, do you think they're working well? Or do you think, what do you think we should do more, essentially? I, I think it's 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 working well. Like I said, it was 10% in 2013. It is 25% now. Um, we've made a progress of 15% in, in 10 years. Is it enough? Um, no, but have we made progress? Yes, we have. And I think we will continue to, to make progress. Um, there's been a lot of effort in trying to mentor um, young ladies and making STEM courses and um, computer science fun and interesting to them and helping them to see that it's um, a career, that a career option. And I think as long as we continue to do this, um, we will continue to, to see the progress um, that we're seeing now. There's so many organizations like yours, you know, targeting women um, here, you know, um, in, in the US, in, in Canada, and even in the developing countries um, um, of the world. So um, a lot of um, money, a lot of investments, a lot of effort is, is going in, into this. And um, for us as well, um, who are already practitioners and are established in the field, um, we also must continue to help others, you know, on their journeys. Um, because sometimes I I found out that when people go for classes and go for trainings and all of that, um, they come out of it with head knowledge. And sometimes they need somebody to help them balance it and situate the knowledge that they've gained um, in, 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 in an experiential way. And so we must continue to help others, give opportunity to people. And when they reach out, um, give them a, a listening voice, you know, a helping hand, um, that support that they need. And if we all continue um, the way that we have with all the attention on women, on uh, ladies, on young girls getting into cybersecurity and, and computer science, um, I think in the next 10 years, um, we would gain more than the 15% that we've gained um, so far. And also because um, cybersecurity continue to, to um, evolve, 
now we're talking about artificial intelligence. Um, this was something that when I was um, my final year in, in the university, we could hardly find textbooks, you know, to, 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 to study because there weren't so many textbooks and research, you know, journals at that time. But AI is mainstream now. Um, my 12 year old son is talking about chat G GPT. You know, he's trying to explore, to, to play with it. Everyone, health, even elderly people are talking about chat GPT now. And so that's also technology that will continue to evolve. And as technologies evolve, so are the risk. And with risk, you have to then secure um, your organizations from, from those risks. So cybersecurity is, is going to continue to, to evolve. And that's why I tell people that there's never going to be scarcity of jobs in cybersecurity as long as there's advancement in the field of technology, as long as um, digital transformation you know, continue to happen, um, you will continue to have a career. Now, what can happen is um, the roles will evolve into other roles, right? And that's where upskilling and continuous learning comes in. You also must continue to upskill yourself and continue to learn and continue to adapt so that you remain relevant. Some roles will fall away. Um, here I will probably take over those roles, but um, there will still be core um, cybersecurity roles um, that um, people would have the opportunity of, of taking up. And um, I had a few more questions, but unfortunately we're almost out of time. So I wanna wrap up the session with this question. What would you like your lasting impact to be? I think for me, um, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, when you sit down to appraise your life and um, your career, I don't think um, it's going to be about the projects that you've executed, you know, or even the monies that you've earned or the roles that you've taken on. I think it's going to be the influence, you know, that you had in, in people's lives, you know, how many people that you've been able to help um, for. I think those for me are the important um, KPIs and um, things that I would like to look back on and give myself a pat on, on the back. And, and that's why I am so interested and invested in helping others, um, especially women and young people um, get a career in cybersecurity because I know it is something that will give them a secure future, right? And also because I don't want people um, doing cybersecurity in unethical ways, you know, taking to um, hacking, you know, or frauds and, and things like that. So I want to help them channel the energy that they have um, in the right direction. And so um, for me, I think I want to be looked at as someone um, who has helped others, um, a lot of people women and young people um, have a thriving, a successful um, cybersecurity career. And I want to be that person that people can reach out to when they need help, when they have a question, when they require a listening hair and um, having me share with them from the, my knowledge and, and from my experience. Uh, so that's, that's what I want to be remembered. For. That is absolutely fantastic. So thank you again, Ola, for being here. We are so appreciative of your time. Um, and everybody, please follow us on YouTube for more cyber conversations and follow us on our other social media. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Fancy. And thank you, Michaela, um, for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>